thought I'd just do a quick PSA about how to prepare 70% ethanol the right way, as well as some tips. What do you say? Well, I say yes. So basically, in the lab, we use 70% ethanol solutions a lot as a disinfectant. Um, and so we can spray it on surfaces, and what it'll do is it'll denature, so it'll unfold and mess up the proteins and the lipids of little microbes. Um, and you might think, okay, well, if ethanol does that, why don't we use 100%? Well, it turns out 70% ethanol is better because, well, what happens if you have 100% is it kind of just meets the surface and it denatures everything on the surface and then you get like this crusty like filmy stuff on the surface that you can't reach underneath um, plus it like evaporates too quickly and the water is going to help it like penetrate and actually be active so we typically make a 70% solution but you might think okay so if I want like 100 mils like 70 of mouth ethanol and 30 of water right wrong so actually the, when we talk about 70%, that's talking about volume, volume. So volume of ethanol compared to total volume. And the volume, water and ethanol, their volumes aren't additive because what happens when you mix them together is that the ethanol kind of sneaks into some spots in the water network. And so it takes up less space than the volumes that you put in. So if you add 30 to 70, you're gonna get something less than 100. So the right way to do it is to add your 70%, 70 mils to a graduated cylinder and then fill up to the final volume of 100 because that's what the volume volume percentage is based off of. So if you've been doing it wrong, don't worry. It's typical, like for most of the things that we're doing, like for making disinfectant, it's really no big deal if it's a little off. There's some wiggle room in like what's most effective for be acting as a disinfectant and if you make it the other way it's not like it's a big deal so don't freak out um, but if you really do care about the exact concentration or and then for future reference you can you should be you doing it the other way where you fill up um, where you go to the final volume rather than just separately measuring the water and the ethanol and mixing them together you can also make marks on your bottle if you go from like the bottom of if you always have it so that you use the bottle till the end so keep like two bottles so that one of them you can use all the way to the end without having to like in the middle of an experiment run out of ethanol and not have any okay back a bottle and then you can fill it you can measure out what you need then mark a line um and basically do it with water first um it's like so mark out like 70 or whatever where the where the ethanol level will be and then where the final level will be um, and then you have a shortcut for filling it. That's not the only shortcut though. So often instead of dealing with like pure ethanol to start with, we're dealing with an ethanol solution. Um, often 190 proof ethanol. Um, so this isn't pure ethanol, it's already ethanol with some water in it. So proof. So basically the ethanol, pure ethanol is what we say like 200 proof. You might have heard of proof from like alcohol drink, alcoholic drinks and things. Basically proof is going to be two times the weight, two times the volume, volume percentage. It's really weird. So basically, 200 per, if you have 200 proof of ethanol, so absolute ethanol, um, this is going to be, 200 divided by two is 100, so it's 100% 100 um, ethanol. If you have 190 proof, well then you have 190 divided by two, 95%, so that's 95% ethanol. And you can get this um, ethanol cheaper because, well, it's harder to get out that last 5% of water. And so, and if we're going to be diluting it in water, we can use this lower percentage. But now this is gonna mess up our calculations because now even if we do it the right way and we fill 70 mils of ethanol and then fill it up to the 100 lit milliliter mark, we're not going to have a 70% solution because we started with a 95% solution. So you could get all like mathy about it and you see when V1 equals C2 V2, so the initial concentration times the initial volume equals the final concentration till the final volume. And if you're trying to calculate some sort of exact final volume, then that's the way to go. But if say you just need like, I need around 100 mils. Well, then what you can do is take a shortcut. So take the percentage of the ethanol. So if it's 190 proof, that's going to be 95% ethanol. And then take, so we want the final to be 70%. Um, actually, if what you do is you measure out um, 70 mils of your 95% ethanol and then fill it um, to the 95 line, 
95 milliliters, well then you get a 70% ethanol solution and this will work for whatever percent you start with. So if you start with an 80%, um, then you would do 70 mils to 80 mils um, and that would give you a, your ethanol solution so of 70%. You, if you look at the math, you can see that it's because you're canceling out the various things um, and being left with this. So of course this isn't giving you exactly what you want potentially. Um, if you say, if, but you can easily like multiply it by a factor if you want to get like 500, around 500 milliliters. Um, well, you can get, if you start with 90%, 95%, you can get to 475. If you multiply it by five, um, what you would be adding. Um, so yeah, so you can multiply it. Um, or you can always go back to your C1, V1 equals to 2V2 if you need to be more exact. But remember to that ethanol and water, they do not, um, their volumes are not additive. You're going to lose volume when you mix them together. So you want to make sure that your final volume is the volume of like the, what you think it should be. Um, so if you're thinking you're making, if you're calculating based on having 100 milliliters, you're gonna have to add more than 30 milliliters of water, which is why you want to do it the measuring method. Um, so measure out your ethanol, then add water to the line in the graduated cylinder. Um, and yeah, just some other tips about making ethanol is that ethanol is flammable. So make sure you label your bottle that says it's flammable. Flammable. Um, also make sure that you write out the full name, ethanol, um, not just ETOH. That's like one of those safety things. Um, and when you put the labels or any sort of label, like or markers or whatever, um, ethanol is going to be able to dissolve normal Sharpies. So use like a lab marker that's resistant to solvents like ethanol. Um, you can also tape over it with like um, packaging tape, or if you have extra like PCR films, those work nicely. Um, or like crystal screen films, um, but only if you have like extra used old ones or something, so you're not like wasting money. Um, but yeah, but so super duper helpful, and now you know how to make it the right way, but remember that don't freak out if you've been making it the wrong way, because you'll probably still be okay.